Hey guys, welcome back. Uh, if it's your first time here, thank you. I appreciate it. And hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. Guys, I have a confession to make. It may seem obvious to some of you, but I have to do it anyway. I have to tell you that I am absolutely obsessed with bird photography. It is the one type of photography that keeps bringing me back over and over again. And I'm guessing since you clicked on this video, you probably have caught the bug a little bit yourself. I have photographed all types of stuff. I've done automotive uh, photography, I've done portraits, I've photographed dogs and uh, man, horses, you name it, you know, elk and deer. But there's something about bird photography that just, ah, I just, I wish I had words for it. It's, it's magical, it's like treasure hunting. It's the one type of photography that gets me most connected with nature because you really have to look and you have to listen. All of your senses get really in tuned when you're out here in a beautiful place like this, trying to capture those tiny little birds. So today I am in an old back roads area of Idaho uh, and I'm in a spot where I've seen birds many times. I photographed some of the same species over and over again. And I want to share with you some of the things that I've learned over the last eight years. Uh, look at here, I got bugs flying on my lens. Yep, little sucker. I want to share with you some of the things I've learned over the last eight years that have brought me a little more pleasure in this, uh, in this wonderful hobby. So if you've started in the bird photography world, you may have realized that you've, you've picked probably one of the most difficult types of photography um, you know, in, in the world. You're trying to photograph tiny little species. They're tough to find. And more importantly, it can get expensive because you wind up having to buy bigger and bigger equipment to get um, better and better shots. Uh, the tips I'm gonna share with you today are not about big camera gear. Don't get me wrong, gear matters. I don't own that big lens because it looks cool. I own it because it just gets sharper images. I get better depth of field. So I'm not discounting gear at all. But the things that I'm gonna share with you today, you can apply these tips to any type of lens. Uh, however, I do recommend uh, you stick with a 300 millimeter or longer for your bird photography. Um, but the fact is there's just some things that you can apply to any type of, of um, of, of equipment that you own. Now, I specifically am a Nikon shooter, so a lot of the stuff I'm gonna talk about today is specific to Nikon, but what I'll do is in the notes, I'll put some you know keywords that also apply to Sony and to Canon as well. So let's dive right into it. Uh, the first few things are gonna be about the camera itself and camera settings. We'll get a little bit into how to find these birds, how to get a little closer to them or get them closer to you. And if you stick with me to the end, I'm gonna talk a little bit about editing. Uh, it'll be very quick, uh, just some of my Lightroom workflow. The only program I use to edit photos is Lightroom, and I've just gotten some great results over the last uh, eight years, and I'd like to share just a couple of them with you. So let's go photograph some birds. All right, guys, I'm gonna do my absolute best to concentrate because I hear, I hear so many birds. Lazuli buntings. Yellow-breasted chat. I've already seen the yellow warbler, and I've heard the spotted towhee. So this is gonna be a pretty neat experience. So look, step one, it doesn't matter what camera you have that you're photographing birds with, you need to go straight into the camera and change your autofocus mode to AFC. That's autofocus continuous mode, which means as you're holding down the back button or the front button half shutter, it is continuously focusing on whatever you point the lens at. You've probably discovered already that birds just don't sit still. They don't, they're not waiting on you to compose a shot, um, listen for the beep to make sure it's in focus and then snap it. Uh, so why, why AFC? Well, it's quite simple. If you're holding down that autofocus button and that bird is moving around, it's continuously changing the autofocus to keep up with your subject. Switch to AFC and I guarantee you, you're gonna get more shots. All right, let's talk about your autofocus points or your mode that you find yourself in. Uh, 
if you can't afford the Canon R5 or the Sony A5 or one of those expensive, um, I don't even know, Sony releases a new camera every couple of weeks. If you can't afford one of those four to $6,000 cameras and you're like me, you know, a $2,000 camera, I don't have all that fancy eye tracking mode for birds. So what I have to do is I have to find the autofocus point that works best for me at the time. Now, typically, if I'm just photographing birds in a portrait style, I will go to single point autofocus mode, which is one tiny little box. And I am constantly putting that box over the bird's eye, trying to get the sharpest eye that I can. Now, if I'm in a situation where I want to capture that bird in flight, Nikon's got a few different modes. If you're in a DSLR, you might have a group mode, which is the four square autofocus section. Uh, on the mirror list, you have dynamic mode, which is basically nine autofocus points. And there's the small box, and there's also the large area autofocus. Now, from my experience with the Nikon Z6 and the mirrorless Nikon, uh, the autofocus large, autofocus small, and the dynamic autofocus perform almost identical. Uh, you have to pan with the subject to keep the subject in that autofocus group. And if you do that, you're gonna have success. The problem with that compared to these auto eye focusing systems is the camera is by default gonna focus on the thing that's the closest to them. So very often, uh, it might look like a great sharp shot when I see it on the back of the camera, but when I zoom in, I'll realize that maybe the wing is in perfect uh, focus, but the head isn't exactly in focus. So just be aware of that. That's just a trade-off, right? If you want perfect auto eye focus, go spend $4,000 on the Canon R5 or close to $7,000 on the Sony A1. So one more camera setting that I think is absolutely critical when it comes to bird photography is the auto ISO setting. I am constantly photographing these birds in and out of shadows. So one second he might be in bright sun, the next he might be uh, in the brush over here and it's in deep shadow. Uh, the next second he might go over here and I've got a beautiful clean background and he's kind of half sun. For me to be constantly switching that ISO to match that setting and metering as I'm watching it, uh, it can become quite difficult, especially when that bird's erratic and it's moving around. So put your ego aside, manual mode aside, take your ISO button, uh, put it to auto ISO, and just trust me, you're gonna start getting more evenly exposed shots. Indigo bunting. Lazuli bunting. Yeah, guys, you're hearing that. I use bird calls. Some people kind of frown upon this, so I'm not gonna glorify it. Um, you have to be very responsible with bird calls. I've been using the Stokes Field Guide to Bird Songs, which is technically a audio book, and I've had that audio book for nearly 20 years now, and they've released it on iTunes. You can go and buy the book, or or maybe it wasn't even iTunes. Maybe I bought the audio book on, on one of the sites. But uh, Stokes Field Guide to Bird Songs. Here's the downfall with that one. Uh, it's got every bird in the United States, but they're numbered. They're not labeled by the name of the bird. So I've committed to memorizing the sound of these birds. I know what number in the book or what chapter they're in, and I just know to go right to it. In this case, the Stokes Field Guide, uh, part four, track number 62 is the Lazuli Bunting. And, uh, and as you see, it works perfectly fine. It came right out. Too easy. All right, let's be honest with each other. This is all great advice if you can find the birds. That is in fact one of the most difficult things about bird photography. These birds are gonna do exactly what they wanna do. It's not like you can call ahead, let them know you're gonna be there and they get themselves ready for the photo shoot. It just doesn't work that way. So studying the area, studying the species and knowing what to look for when you go out to a spot is crucial. Um, so specifically the lazuli buntings, I can do a number of things to kind of prepare myself. Number one being that I can get on eBird and I can look at where some of these people have found these birds already. Uh, second thing is, is I can read up on the habitat and 
know going into this that I'm looking in the right place. I know specifically that lazuli buntings like a little higher elevation, they like hillsides, and they like these, uh, these sagebrush. I'm in the right spot for that. Uh, third thing, and this is a little tougher, is you have to just put the time in. Go to these spots, look, listen, take notes, and just commit to memory, commit a file in your mind of where you've seen these birds before. These birds are creatures of habit. I've gone back and photographed birds year after year, and sometimes the exact location within 10 feet of where I photographed it the year before. So put the time in, go out and study that environment, and know that if you put that time in, you're gonna find great opportunities. We can't talk about bird photography without at least touching on composition. Like I mentioned before, you can't call the bird in advance and say, hey, listen, guy, we need you to get on the perfect branch. We need you to get the exact lighting. Uh, that just doesn't happen, right? You kind of find yourself in a situation where you just take what you can get. But there are a couple of things that you can do when you're out in the field. Uh, number one, and I feel like this is one of the most important, and that is watch your backgrounds. Really pay attention um, to where you're setting up and if you're calling the birds in or if you know the behavior of the bird and it keeps returning to a spot, uh, walk around that perch enough to where you get a nice clean background and it's pleasing. The second thing is birds are just more appealing when you're eye level with them. So if you're photographing birds out in the marshes, uh, go ahead and get dirty. Get down on your belly, get eye level with that bird. Uh, if you're out in the field like this and you know that the the lazuli buntings like to get on top of these these sagebrush and these junipers, uh, try to find yourself eye level with them. Uh, even if that means you got to get up on the side of the hill a little bit. So good clean backgrounds and getting eye level are just huge uh, things that'll take your photography to the next level. The other thing is you're not going to get close every single time. Don't be discouraged about that. There are some beautiful environmental uh, types of composition out there that are very inspiring. Be creative, you know, look for ways to compose that bird in the frame without having to go home and crop into it at 100% uh, to feel like you've got a decent image. So if you're not able to get close, try to find a way to frame that bird in a way where you capture the environment and it's still pleasing. Get your clean backgrounds and do your best to just simply get eye level with the subject. I'm looking right at him. It's the yellow breasted chat. He's taunting me. <laughs> this guy's giving me fits. He's just not gonna come out. I don't even have a half shot of him. I see like a little bit of yellow. I can see him kind of half move in there, but he disappears as soon as I point at him. Obviously his eyesight's way better than mine is. Freaking bird. I shall call him the yellow breasted jerk. He just doesn't want to participate. Well, we got some great images. Uh, the lazuli bunting was definitely very cooperative. Uh, I did see a couple of other species. The yellow-breasted chat just, he's a jerk. He doesn't want to get photographed, so so be it. You know, you don't get a pretty picture of him today. I'll get him though, I'll get him. Lifetime hobby. Let's go back, let's head back to the house. Let's do a couple of uh, edits and I'll show you how I bring all this together. The edit's only gonna take a couple of minutes. And uh, this is where the magic happens, guys. This is where the magic happens. All right, guys, we'll finish this off with a quick edit. I'm not gonna bore you with my entire workflow. Just know that I do have some presets that are saved and this baseline bird edit is something I've used in the past. Uh, it basically 
increases the white and black point in the picture just below clipping and it's a nice even exposure. But what I want to share with you is just a simple little trick to give that picture a little more pop and that's using radial filters. So now that I have an even exposure I'll just pull this radial filter from up here where this light is and basically accentuate the given light that we have. Uh, I also like to use a little bit of a vignette to further enhance that, brings your eye to the middle of the image. A little more light up at the top. And that's it, guys. Thanks again for joining me, and don't forget to uh, check back in by subscribing. More videos coming your way. Thanks, guys.